Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about I'll be analyzing my master's degree. Was it a good decision? Was it a bad decision? Here, I'll be having six different vectors. The first one would be length of course. Second would be placement. Third would be cost, faculty, job prospects and salary. So these are the different parts of this video. And I might be giving a rating that, you know, what do I think in my experience about length of course? Is it five out of five? Was it a really good decision? Four out of five? How was it? What about the salary and so on? And you know that I've been able to get my job after my master's degree but but if you watch this video till the end i'll let you know it how quickly i was able to get my job did i even went for a post study work visa or not so in order to you know know all these things make sure you watch till the end now i believe that if i compare length of course like of, of doing a master's here in the uk compared to other countries it's really good because it's shorter in duration is for one year if you compare it to countries like maybe canada i think it's usually for two years whereas in the uk it's for one year however there's a bit of a watch out here now it's like a double edged sword right <laughs> length of the duration uh, because you've got only one year now so you have to be really good with your time management especially with students who are thinking that they can pay their fees during pursuing their masters let me just break the ice it's going to be very difficult you need to be really really efficient with your time management if you want to achieve that goal right by that i mean you have to be careful that you study you do your part-time job you have to work on a dissertation there are multiple things which goes on they've only got one year to do all this thing and also you have to look for a job later on right so that's a bit of a watch out so i, I think in terms of length of course i'll rate uh, my decision was worth it so i'll put it uh, four out of five. I'll just take one star out because time management is a bit hard. I wasn't able to work 20 hours of a part-time job. I had to reduce my hours because of that. Second thing is about placements. Now here, let us, the point of view is, does university help you to get a placement? The answer is partially yes. <laughs> what does this even mean? Partially yes, what I mean is that, uh, so university is going to, so it, it's actually like applying for a full-time job really while you apply for the placement. So the help which university provides is, if placement is part of a course, you'll be assigned a professors and with that professor, you can work on a CV and you can work on your cover letter. These two documents are the most important documents because I repeat on this channel quite a lot. So that's why I'm emphasizing it. These two documents are the most important when you're applying for any job, right? And this has to be at the best standard. And the university helps you with that because you've got a dedicated professor. Not their career system because career services are semi-ish okay. I've taken that, but they aren't the best. But professors have got the knowledge of their industry. And I love the fact that my professor was able to help me build my CV and cover that. Otherwise, I would have struggled. And the second thing is, then you have to apply by yourself, right? So university might help you with uh, showing you what sort of placements are available in the industry. And then you have to take the next step. You have to apply, go to their website, uh, put a CV cover letter. Depends on, the, uh, depends on the employer, whether they like it or not. If they like it, you will move to uh, something called an online test, which is aptitude-based questions and so on. Then you will move to the interview stage. There are a couple of interviews for some of the companies. Some of them have got computer-assisted interviews and then the last invite you to their site. And then you give another interview, right? And then you finally get the job. So you have to do all these things by yourself, but the only help which university provides is with the CV cover letter and by letting you know where the opportunities are. So I, I do feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it has to be your own effort. So in my experience, I would rate it as five out of five. My decision was worth it because I was able to actually get my placement at the end of my, uh, during, during my fourth year of my university. Okay. So now the third part is really on the cost. A lot of people would have skipped to this part. Uh, so for, for the masters, right, the average cost is around 20,000 pounds, but I know few the universities even charge 25,000 and 30,000 pounds, okay? So, but I think on average it's around 20,000 and for your living expenses, put another 10,000 on it. So in total, make sure you're prepared to have 30,000 in your bank account. And my recommendation is that don't leave this big amount of money for your part-time job work here because you never know. Because some people might struggle initially to even get used to the education system here in the UK. So it might take you maybe three or four, even five months to get your first part-time job because you will be so busy with your studies, right? So my recommendation is be prepared for your one-year financials. Don't just rely on the part-time jobs, right? Now in terms of rating cost, I don't think so. It's like a really good 
parameter to rate it because you know it's very given that it's, it's really high you know if you compare so i was in scottish university Strathclyde university for a scottish student your fees is only two thousand pounds if you are a student from england going to scottish institution and studying or if you're studying in england it will be ten thousand pounds and for us it's eighteen thousand and twenty thousand pound right so yeah so you have to pay a lot of money so just be prepared for it the first point is on faculty, which is about professors. So in my opinion, my university professors were super duper helpful. They've got weekly sessions, which they call as our sessions. So if you've got a doubt what, are they, what they've taught in that one week, you can actually book that one hour slot with them. You don't have to even book actually, you can actually go there because it's like an online meeting or it's like a walk-in. So you just go to their office and you know you just chat about the doubt which you've got. So in that sense, professors are really open. They're there to help you out, but you need to take the initiative to go there right they're not going to go do, go to you and ask oh how's this study going on no you have to it's other way around right you have to give them the feedback that oh well i've got it out here please can you help me out the second is that you during my placement the professor helped me with my cv cover letter letting me know about the opportunities then i applied then i was able to get my placement right uh, so there was a lot of hard work from my side but then uh, professors were a very key enabler over there right then also i was also able to get my phd degree i was able to get my phd funding uh, at the end of my master's that was again down to my professor he saw that i was an international student uh, and i had got really good grades so then he was willing to apply for a scholarship on my behalf for me and i was able to get the scholarship then also i was able to get the stipend so i would have actually did my phd after my master's because i had such a good relationship with my professor and they were really open-minded really helpful and so on so i love professors 515 now the fifth factor is around job prospects so after finishing so well you know it's not like if you do your masters you'll get the job so take that out okay so what matters is how you've performed during your masters which is how are your grades in my opinion make sure to get a first class which is above 70 percent uh like you know in indian equivalent if you convert into percentages it has to be more than 70 percent your grade uh, my grade was 89% by the way, okay, and I topped my university. So I'm not saying you'll top the university, but at least get your first class. Or, or the other thing is the projects or the dissertation you've been working on, it has to be top notch, right? And then the third thing is make sure you're doing placements, make sure you're doing internships. Uh, if, you, if you're coming here uh, from India, make sure you've got one year of experience or you've got three months of internship experience. Don't come here straight as a fresher, straight finishing my bachelor's i want to i don't want to wish my i don't want to have a gap so i want to come here for masters don't do that okay uh, if you want to do that make sure your master's degree has got placement okay otherwise you're going to struggle so in terms of job prospect for me it was pretty good but i know a lot of people do struggle especially the ones who don't have that work experience so i rated it as three on five before I go on salary prospects, I would really like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Amber Students. So this is a marketplace of student accommodation. The link is in the description. Head on to their website, just put your the place you're coming here in the UK. You'll be able to see all the accommodations which are available. And they've got plenty of cashback offers for the students that have been working on this channel for the last two years. I trust them a lot. A lot of students have booked through my link. So make sure you click on the link in the description and book your accommodation. Now the final part which is around the salary prospects, right? On average, after finishing your master's, expect to earn around £30,000 on average, right? And there are a lot of factors which influence your salary depending on which industry you are in, uh, what sort of company you've got the job in. So, but but I think if you have like scored really good at your university and you are in a good company, £40,000 is something which I'll say for you to expect, okay? Now, the second thing is, now, if you finish your bachelor's degree, undergraduate degree, there are two different entry levels in some of the company. If you finish your bachelor's, you'll start as a lower entry level, which means your salary will be around about £30,000. But if you start, if you finish your master's and then you join the company, sometimes you actually get benefit in your salary. So you might directly get me £40,000, £45,000. Now, if you work somewhere in London, expect your salary to increase by five to ten thousand pounds okay and then the salaries have got like a really steep steep curve depending on career progression uh, so if you perform really well in your uh, company your salary is going to increase year by year you're going to also get bonus so this is just the base salary you'll get bonus you'll get pension scheme allowances health health benefits there are plenty of other benefits which comes with it right but on average thirty thousand pounds 
but I know people who have been even able to own like 45,000, 40,000 pounds as well, right? So well, if you were waiting for that, how long it took for me to get my job. So I was able to immediately get my job after finishing my university because I remember I scheduled in my placement and the same company gave me the job later on, right? So I had to cancel my PhD offer and then go with my job offer and I didn't have to go on any post to work visa, right? So if you're waiting for this part and with this, I hope this video was helpful. I also do one-to-one -one calls, by the way, link is in the description. You can go ahead to my website and book that call, okay, if you want any help. I also do CV and cover letter consultations, so I can help you with that too. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.